Factory Hot Rods of Pro Stock are over 15 feet long. But historically, at the Gator Nationals, the front two inches is all that counts. Many times over the years, that distance was the difference between Gators glory or Florida failure. Six years ago, Warren Johnson won his first of four consecutive Gator Nationals titles by edging Darrell Alderman by less than one thousandth of a second. And three years later, the professor nipped his current arch rival, Jim Yates, in the semis by that tiny two inches. Same game, different players. 1993 found Yates again on the losing side of a dead heat against David Rampey. And that same year, Mark Powick took a similar size squeaker over Bruce Allen. 1995 was a Powick replay as he and Larry Morgan raced door handle to door handle in the semis with the Cowboy prevailing by a thousandth of a second. Pro stock is parody with runaways a rarity. would certainly be the word here for Pro Stock Racing this weekend. If you don't believe me, ask that guy. No, ask that, not that guy. Not the guy with the shirt off. We got some great activity right here. Many of six second runners here in Pro Stock in qualifying. And you can take a look. That's the first half of the field. Nary a seven second run to be found. Troy Coughlin's running a car that looks suspiciously like one of Warren's. You remember he banged it up badly. And look, I see a dodge. I see a dodge right there. Number nine. It's been a long time. Pete Williams on the bump, bump, bump spot at 7.01. But he wound up making the cut. And that's more than about 15 other guys can say. There's the ladder. Warren at the top of the pack. There's going to be some great matchups. Mark Powick and the Summit cars having a good start to the season. We will find out how Jim Yates can do in his Mickey D's car without Dick Maskin. KJ on the other side, if he meets that, it would be in the finals. Mark Ingersoll certainly hopes that doesn't happen. Some other good runners. Jerry Ekman's having a great start to the 1997 season. We'll take a look at some of the action from earlier today in round number one. Remember I told you that Jake's car looked a lot like Warren Johnson? Well, that's Jake's on the left side. Looks a lot like Warren's car. It is Warren's car, but don't tell anybody. I'm sworn to secrecy. Looks like Warren on the starting line, too, because nobody wants to stay. That's Ray Franks over there in the far lane. Bang, they're out of the starting gate. Heading on down the racetrack. It's going to be a pretty good race. Oh, just like we promoted it. It was just by inches, those two inches we talked about by those producers make the big box, folks. We'll take a look at this again. If you didn't believe me the first time, well, I've got an honest face. You should take my word for it. That's a pretty good run. You must huh, like guys? that six seconds on. You had your first one in qualifying, and now it's 699, and what a squeaker over Troy. Oh, I didn't know how close it was. I didn't know how fast we ran, but I knew it was a good race. Looked like I might have had him out of the gate a little bit. You did. Pete Williams in the near side. WJ, the GM performance parts machine on the far side. He loves coming down here to Florida, and he's not even a baseball player. On the starting line for Pete Williams. Swing is a long fly ball to deep center field. Oh, he's out of here. I'm sorry. I always wanted to be a baseball play-by-play -play guy. WJ gets the win, and he is staying alive. Warren, this stupid headwind is costing you money. 199 <laughs> miles an hour again. Well, we're just happy with the wind. 199 uh, miles an hour, be it, that as it may, the wind is the important part of this thing. That means we've got another shot at it. And it's 696. 696 is uh, good for the seat, uh, at least good for us anyway. Good for anybody. Hey, wind, wind, only one letter. What's the difference? Mark Powell, the Summit Racing Machine on the far side of the racetrack. You can buy this car from Summit. It's $29.95, but you got to pay the shipping and handling. And that's a little bit more expensive. It's Lewis Ward in the near lane, one of the few Oldsmobiles still out there. Powick's had a beautiful start. The first two races, can he win it? Yep. Mark Powell again, the Summit car with a great matchup, and he goes into the second round. He's with Steve at the far end of the track. When Mark, if you're going to run a 708, you better leave first. Yeah, you know, Steve, um, we broke our good piece yesterday on the last qualifying session, and we put our back up in, and it was on a pretty good run, and something happened in high gear, and the thing shut off. But uh, I'll take them any way I can get them after last year. Every round helps. Nice driving. Thank you, Steve. Another guy thanking Steve. Let's give him a nice round of applause. It'll be Terry Adams to the right side. That is Jim Yates and the McDonald's team machine. He's the Winston champ. He's going for a triple or a double or a Big Mac. He gets the win, and he goes 695, 197 miles an hour. Couldn't quite match Warren's 199, but the old adage, E.T., wins drag races, not speed. Actually, it's not an old adage. I just made that up. The Dodge will go into the next round against W.J. Yates against the Cowboy. Should be some fun. And K.J. still trying to meet that against Ray Franks. Edwards and Schmidt, two very good drivers and a lot of power. Let's catch up now with Steve Evans for an update on Pro Stock.
Jim Yates and Dick Ditmaskin may have agreed to disagree, but there's still plenty of firepower in the Yates trailer. I count at least two motors there. There's one in the Pontiac that in first round recorded a 695. But what's the situation without Dick here to tune these motors? You know, Steve, it's no secret that Dick Maskin was a big part of our program, but, you know, we've got a heck of a team here that's known how to win a lot of rounds, and, you know, they've got a lot of confidence in me, and they've put a lot of faith in me here, and, uh, you know, the McDonald's team is going to be here to stay, and I'm just doing the best I can trying to win one round at a time. What happens when you guys have to rebuild these Maskin motors? Well, you know, we're working a program out with Bob Ingalls from JMB Performance out of New York, and we worked with him before. He helped me a lot in the years past, and, uh, you know, we're confident we'll be able to hold our own. Okay, that's Jim Yates. There's one of those big honking motors there that hopes to carry him to a 200 mile an hour shot. TNN's exclusive live coverage of the Mac Tools Gator Nationals is brought to you by Peerless Faucet. Get more out of your water, out of your faucet, than just water. Let's get more out of your faucet than just water. You have to feel for Connie Coletta, the Rodney Dangerfield of Top Fuel. He's a self-made millionaire businessman, a speed barrier breaker. He has 10 national event titles to his credit and a U.S. Nationals crown. But he's almost always thought of as Shirley Spoil or Scott's dad. And for four decades, the Gators gave him no respect either. For three consecutive years in the early 80s, Conrad faced off with Ms. Mulnally and Weiss walked, or should I say, stalked away the loser to his greatest rival. Only in 83 did Connie take the measure of Mulnally to reach the final. And there he watched Gary Beck streak away to victory and a place in the Gator Nationals record book. In fact, it wasn't until this race three years ago that the Florida sun shined brightly for Connie as he marched through eliminations to the finals where he spanked son Scott with the quickest time of eliminations. Finally, after a quarter of a century, Connie had turned the tables and taken a bite out of the Gator. And Connie is off to a great start here in 1997, as well as several of the other drivers. He is quietly starting to rack up some points. Don't forget the next Sunday on TNN Motorsports, it's a full day of live racing action. First at 1230 Eastern, it's the Florida Dodge Dealers 400 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Race from Homestead, Florida. Then at 4 p.m. Eastern, the NASCAR Bush Grand National regulars try their luck in Las Vegas 300. It's all right here on TNN Motorsports next Sunday. Some great racing activity all coming your way. They'll be hard-pressed to beat the kind of activity we have right here at the Mac Tools Gator Nationals. Racing Jim Head is a bit of a dilemma for Alan Johnson. Let's remember last year, Alan served as a consultant to the Head team and personally wrenched him to his first national event victory at Topeka. But now they're both in the same category. He's still a consultant, but really only between races. His contract says he can't go over and help Head tune his car, unless, of course, this car is already out of competition. And so for 97, that didn't happen. Take a look at some of that action in round number two, and there is the close call machine of Jim Head. He would take on Gary Selzy and Team Winston, as Steve just mentioned, and there's a lot of close friendships here in this particular matchup. Selzy in the near lane hasn't lost this year. The close call communication car in the far lane, it's a close call, but how about that? E.T., phone home, or Jim Head go home. 476, Team Winston and Selzy are winners. 10 rounds and 10 wins. How about it? They just don't get any easier, do they, Steve? I'll tell you what, this thing, I don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff to know what's going on, but it feels like it spins when it's leaving. It's soft, then it moves through the middle hard, and then she kind of lays back down down here. One good thing, though, you have Amato and Bernstein on the opposite side of the ladder. Yeah, hopefully we can, you know, get enough data on this run to find out what's happening to get her in the 60s, because, boy, we know we're going to have to be there. Well, it's a good thing Celsius having a good race day. He's certainly having a bad hair day. Wow. The Bud King in the near lane, Kenny Bernstein, who has lost this year with a 461 and a 462. He's been one of the quicker cars out there. He's got nothing to show for it. Scott Coletta on the left side of your screen. Kenny Bernstein on the right. Might be good if you're looking at baseball throwing smoke, but it's never good when you're on the quarter mile. Scott Coletta, 469, 297, and Kenny Bernstein is gone. Watch this again on the in-car. You can see him. Whoa, there he goes. Where'd he go? I can see him He's somewhere down there. Anyway, the only guy that's gone into the next round is Scott Coletta. 
Well, Scott, this is one of those deals. If it hooks, it goes. If it doesn't, well, look what happened to Kenny Bernstein up in smoke. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, we'll take him however we can. Uh, Kenny, he's been on a roll. There's a couple of them guys been pretty stout, and it's going to come around one of these days. All the oil is where it belongs in the motor. That's for sure. Hey, Scott, try to contain all of your excitement. Well, you got a couple more rounds to go, or at least that's the game plan. All right, next up, it's Amano. It's Vandergrift, the Jersey's activewear machine. Been throwing out some good numbers. Was in the 460s out of Phoenix. He's been running very well here. Could he stop Joe Amato? Could he stop it? It looks like no. Vandergrift gave him a run. Amato, 465, 312 miles an hour. Must have been those little black gadgets he had on his ears. Take a look at this again in the replay. This is slow motion as we look at it again. Amato holds on and gets the win by just about that much. It'd be Mike Dunn in the Mopar machine of Daryl Gwynn. The Florida fans would love to see Daryl and Jerry Gwynn and Mike Dunn in the Mopar machine march into the championship round. Corey Mack in the McDonald Ziploc car here in the near side of the racetrack. Corey Mack struggled out in Phoenix. Ran well here in the number two spot in qualifying. Let's see if he can put a little cloud cover over the Florida faithful. I don't think so as Pikey goes right down Broadway and gets the win. Good numbers. Keeping pace with the big boys. 468. Mike Dunn, Bopar, Daryl Gwynn go into the next round. That would set up the semifinals. Amato against Scott Coletta. Amato, three out of the four times he won it last year. And Mike Dunn against Gary Selzy, of course, they've only met one time. Gary Selzy's beaten everybody this year, including Mike Dunn. Steve? Well, Bob Fry, as you well know, nobody ever drove a top fuel dragster with any more vigor and enthusiasm than Daryl Gwynn. And Daryl, the Gator National was the last race you won in your career back in 1990. Brings back a lot of memories, Steve, and uh, we've got a lot of fan support here. We've got a lot of Mopar fans here, and uh, this team is due for some uh, good luck. You know, we've, uh, we're, we're doing good in the points. Um, we just need some luck, and uh, these guys have done a heck of a job so far today. And Mike Dunn is driving the wheels off this car. He really is. These reaction times are uh, incredible. He's pumped up. Uh, I'm pumped up. Uh, he's telling everybody that I'm going to dock his pay if he don't uh, win this race for us. I think we know who the Florida fans are rooting for today, no question about it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not a better, kinder, gentler, more deserving individual to speak on behalf of NHRA drag racing than that guy you just saw, Daryl Gwynn. We've got more coming up live from the Mac Tools Gator Nationals here on TNN.